In this demonstration, we'll see how Winyard Intelligence can be used to explore data pertinent to a fraud investigation. For our source data, we'll use a publicly available set of emails seized as part of investigations into energy company Enron, the largest bankruptcy in America's history. The emails have been collected from the last 12 months of Enron's existence and have been filtered by business relevance. The resulting set contains 1,700 emails. Let's go take a look. Winyard Intelligence has analysed the emails in two ways. First, the structured data of who emailed whom is used to connect people according to their co-occurrence as senders or recipients of the same emails. We then use text mining techniques to extract interesting entities from the text. Next, information theory is used to detect significant relationships between people and other entities and to assign them a strength value, giving us a network we can visualise and navigate to make sense of the email collection. Let's start by looking at the network of who emails whom in the organisation. We'll do this by telling the system to graph the most prominent people and their relationships. Most people are grouped into one large cluster, more weakly connected at the fringes. This is not unexpected in a large organisation where the most important people would communicate with each other often. Let's see if we can find anyone that might help us with our fraud investigation. There are a number of ways we can do this. If we want to see who the main players are, we can filter the graph in various ways. The first of these is to further filter by relationship strength. As we move the slider, we are eliminating nodes that are not sufficiently strongly related. The strongest relationship is between CEO Stephen Keane and his PA Maureen McVicker. As we slide the filter back, we see that the network grows from Stephen outwards, and this shows us who the influential people were in Enron at this time. The relationship filter has given us a good overview of the structure of the company's communications, but it hasn't thrown up any surprises yet. Let's try a different tack. We'll use a social networking anomaly metric to find people with unusual connection patterns. The click metric finds people whose directly connected neighbourhood is more strongly interlinked than normal. Such people are sharing information intensively amongst themselves, but not with the wider organisation. Perhaps they have something to hide. Applying this filter, we immediately eliminate CEO Stephen Keane. Although he is central to the network, he communicates widely with a large number of staff and is not part of a clique. He's probably not the best person to pursue first. The most cliquey person is James Steffs. Let's take a closer look at him. We'll drop him into a new graph so we can retain our original graph but return to him as required. Clicking on James node gives us details about his relationships, including what emails he has sent, who he has shared emails with, and a list of entities that are strongly related to him. From this we can see that James has sent five emails, is related to many people, and has discussed many entities. Of interest are organisations such as the Federal Energy Regulation Commission, or FERC, and ISO, the government organisation that buys power for the state of California. He has also been discussing Gray Davis, the Governor of California, and Frank Wolak, a Stanford professor critical of Enron's dealings. James is already starting to look interesting. Let's expand James now to see who he has shared emails with. We'll select Expand Collaborators. James was strongly related to a moderately sized group of people, including CEO Stephen Keane, so he's probably someone fairly important. Perhaps the content of the emails is interesting. Let's use Expand Sent Emails to see what emails in the collection James has sent. Most of the emails appear to be on the same confidential subject. Clicking on one brings up the email's contents. It describes a discussion about what to do with Enron's 16,000 residential customers who have now become unprofitable. The email makes it plain that Enron are probably going to dump these customers. Clearly James is in on some of the more unsavoury aspects of Enron's business. 
Sometimes further suspects can be found by following an email's conversation thread. Let's expand this email by thread to see where it leads. James sent the email to his clique, and it was replied to by Karen Den. Three people replied to Karen's email, and, interestingly, one of these replies has led to a private conversation between Karen and Jeff Dasevich. Looking at Karen's email to Jeff, we see that she is a dissenting voice, and may be worth following up as a potential whistleblower. Winyard intelligence can quickly lead to people of interest by exposing and analysing connections between people and other entities extracted automatically from structured data and unstructured text. In a short space of time we have uncovered a person of interest whose emails bear closer scrutiny. Winyard intelligence is an effective tool for navigating and making sense of investigative evidence such as emails.